In an earlier video, we talked about diagonalizing Hermitian operators and Hermitian matrices, including real symmetric matrices, and we discovered that they had some very nice properties. Well, it turns out that unitary operators have almost the same properties, and they're almost as nice. So let's suppose that we have u as a unitary operator on some finite dimensional vector space, or if you prefer, you can think of u as a unitary n by n matrix. Then, the eigenvalues of u, they're not real, but they lie in the unit circle. They can always be written as e to the i theta for some real value of theta. They're associated with an angle. Eigenvectors with different eigenvalues are orthogonal. Unitary matrices are always diagonalizable. We'd never have to worry about power vectors. And finally, you can always find an orthonormal basis for your vector space consisting of eigenvectors of u. Now, this is almost the same list of properties we had for Hermitian matrices. The only difference is that eigenvalues of Hermitian matrices are real. Eigenvalues of unitary matrices lie on the unit circle. So let's see why that is. First, let's suppose that we have a unitary matrix, and x is an eigenvector with eigenvalue lambda 1, and y is an eigenvector with eigenvalue lambda 2. So the inner product of x with itself is the inner product of ux with ux, because u preserves inner products. It's the inner product of lambda 1x with lambda 1x. When you pull this lambda 1 out of the inner product, you get a lambda 1 bar. When you pull this one out, you get a lambda 1. And that tells us that lambda 1 bar times lambda 1, in other words, lambda 1 squared, has to be 1. So lambda 1 has to be a unit complex number. It, can be, it doesn't have to be real. It doesn't ha just have to be plus or minus 1. It can be i or e to the i pi over 3. <coughs> it just has to be a complex number of size 1. It lives on the unit circle. Now, how about eigenvectors with different eigenvalues? Well, the inner product of x with y is the same thing as the inner product of ux with uy, because u preserves inner products, which is the inner product of lambda 1x with lambda 2y, which is lambda 1 bar times lambda 2 times the inner product of x with y. But remember, lambda 1 is a unit complex number. So lambda 1 bar is the same thing as 1 over lambda 1. So this is lambda 2 over lambda 1 times the inner product of x with y. So the inner product of x with y is a number other than 1 times the inner product of x with y. And that means that the inner product of x with y has to be 0. You can you put this on the other side of the equation and divide by 1 minus lambda 2 over lambda 1 if you wish. But the upshot is that the inner product has to be 0. So here's an example. Let's look at the matrix. <coughs> this matrix. Now you see the first column is a normal vector because 3 fifths squared plus 4 fifths squared plus 0 squared is 1. The second column is, is a unit vector and the third column is a unit vector. And they're orthogonal. The inner product of these two is 12 20 fifths plus 12 to, minus 12 20 fifths plus 12 20 fifths, that's 0. The inner product of the first and third and the inner product of the second and third are manifestly 0. So since the columns are orthonormal, this must be a unitary matrix. And in fact, it is. The eigenvalues are 3 plus fifths plus or minus 4 fifths i and i. The eigenvectors are i10. You can normalize it by dividing by root 2, minus i10 and 001. Any two of these are orthogonal. Where do the eigenvalues live? They're on the unit circle. Here is i. Here is 3 fifths plus 4, 4 fifths i. Here's 3 fifths minus 4 fifths i. They're all on the unit circle. OK, so why are our unitary matrices diagonalizable? Now remember, we had three proofs of why Hermitian matrices are diagonalizable, and there are analogous proofs for the, the unitary matrices. 
The first is that there's no, no such thing as power vectors, or rather, any power vector has to be an eigenvector. So if the matrix weren't diagonalizable, then you would have a basis of power vectors, and you'd be able to find a power vector of degree 2. And you can scale it so that its length is 1. And then 1 would be the length of x uh, squared. So that would be the length of u to the n x squared. But if x is a power vector, then we can expand u to the n x as lambda to the n x plus n lambda to the n minus 1 times u minus lambda times the identity x. And since it's not an eigenvector, this term is not 0. But that's an inner product of this with itself. As n gets bigger and bigger and bigger, this term gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. So the inner product with itself gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. The inner product winds up being n squared times something non-zero plus lower order terms. In particular, it can't stay 1. Any polynomial that has an n squared in it is not going to be a constant. That's a contradiction. So you can never have a power vector of degree 2 that's not an eigenvector, and therefore it must be diagonalizable. Same ideas for Hermitian matrices. Orthogonality, this also works like with Hermitian matrices. You can approximate u by a u epsilon, where u epsilon is unitary and has distinct eigenvalues, and so is diagonalizable. But then the eigenvectors are u epsilon or orthogonal. And then you take limits as epsilon goes to 0. Each one of the eigenvectors of u epsilon has a limit that becomes an eigenvector of u. So you always have enough eigenvectors of u to form an orthonormal basis. Again, it's the same proof we use for Hermitian matrices, only with unitaries instead. <laughs> the last step is by induction. We're going to prove that unitary matrices are diagonalizable by induction on the size of the matrix. It's obviously true for 1 by 1 matrices. So let's suppose it's true for k by k matrices. And we want to prove it for k plus 1 by k plus 1 matrices. So if we have a k plus 1 by k plus 1 matrix, you can always find an eigenvector. All matrices have at least one eigenvector. Let's call its eigenvalue lambda. And then you can pad this out to form an orthonormal basis that starts with the eigenvector and has a bunch of other vectors. Now, this, this first guy is an eigenvector. These other guys can be anything. They're not eigenvectors. They're just any old vectors that, together with this, make an orthonormal basis. And then we look at the matrix of u and the b basis. Since b1 is an eigenvector, the first column of ub is lambda 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. And you notice that's a unit vector, because lambda 1 squared, magnitude squared, is 1, plus 0 squared plus 0 squared plus 0 squared makes 1. On the other hand, it's a unitary matrix, so the first row has to be a unit vector as well. And the only way the first row can be a unit vector is if the rest of the first row is nothing but zeros. So the first row has to be lambda 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. And that means that our matrix now is block diagonal. And what's more is this portion down here is unitary, because the, the matrix of u dagger is the transpose conjugate of this. And so a dagger is a inverse. But we, by assumption, you see this is a k by k matrix, and this is 1 by 1. We assume that every k by k matrix, unitary matrix, was diagonalizable. So since a is diagonalizable, u in the b basis is diagonalizable, which means that u is diagonalizable. Again, it's morally the same proof that we used for Hermitian operators. Slight wrinkles about the rows, but it's essentially the same proof.